Broadcasting, the station of unlimited possibilities, presents Creating Your Seat at the Table with your host, Ashley Little, as she welcomes her guest to the table. Welcome to Creating Your Seat at the Table. I am your host, Ashley Little. A little bit about myself, corporate professional by day, entrepreneur by night, CEO and founder of Ashley Little Enterprises, LLC, owner and creator of Creative Broadcasting, and co-founder and owner of Talk Radio and TV Network, LLP. Tonight we have an amazing special VIP guest by the name of Yolanda Cumbus. A little bit about her. Yolanda Cumbus learned the destructive nature of toxic, abusive relationships by watching both her mother and father endure their share. Growing up, she began repeating the cycle, experiencing her own string of unhealthy relationships. After a series of poor choices, a destructive marriage, and nearly losing her life after a tragic miscarriage, Yolanda finally decided to search for examples of healthy relationships and how to obtain them for herself. Break Free from from the Cycle of Broken Relationships is the culmination of the author's research, which included the development of a deeper relationship with God. In this book, Yolanda outlines the steps that readers must take to define, identify, and ultimately overcome abusive relationships. Through guided self-reflection and the pursuit of a deeper relationship with God, Yolanda shows readers how to gain the ability to understand their relationships and how to find the courage to live healthier, more positive, and more productive lives. Yolanda Covers was born in Houston, Texas. She earned a B.S. in Industrial Engineering from Texas Tech and was a standout athlete on Texas Tech's volleyball team. She also obtained a jury's doctorate from Loyola University, New Orleans, a jury's doctorate from the school, from New Orleans School of Law. Yolanda is now a licensed attorney, a member of the State Bar of Georgia and the District of Columbia Bar, and works as a primary patent examiner at the United States Patent and Trademark Office in Alexandria, Virginia. Yolanda obtained a ministry license in 2017 through the Higher Ground Always Abounding Assembly, Inc., serving in various church ministries and community outreach services. She is passionate about motivating others and ministering to the needs of women and children who have been marginalized and abused. And Yolanda is also the founder of Break Free Ministries, Inc. Welcome, welcome to the table, the amazing Yolanda Cumbers. Wow, thank you so much. You are that welcome. Great. <laughs> yes. yes. I am honored awesome. and humbled to have you at the table tonight and I can't wait for my listeners to hear all the wisdom and knowledge that you're gonna share with us about your journey and about your amazing book that just came out. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. So please um, tell us, Yolanda, more about your entrepreneur journey. Well, um, you know, I actually kind of stumbled upon it when I, um, after I went through the experiences that I went through and God transformed me, um, I had a passion to help others break the cycle of destructive relationships just like God, you know, broke those things for, for me. And the ministry uh, came directly as a result of that. So after I published my first book last spring, um, I was encouraged to go ahead and start that ministry so that other people could also be free based on the principles of the book. So this is definitely my passion. Um, I feel, you know, very um, I'm very committed to it, and I know that God took me through those experiences um, to help other people. So that's that. I love that. I love that. I love that you show how, you know, that you just stumbled into it, right? Because, you know, whenever it's, it's time and whenever God wants us to do something, he's going to make sure it happens, right, whether we want it to happen or not. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, Yolanda. You are passionate about motivating others and ministering to the needs of women and children who have been marginalized and abused. So please tell us more about your passion. Yes. Well, I, I, I had a, a somewhat tumultuous childhood. I yeah. uh, grew up with my mother. Um, my mother and my father divorced when I was very young. My mother went on to marry multiple times. 
every single mm-hmm. one of the people that she married was abusive in some way. Um, you know, her second husband was extremely physically abusive, and not only did he abuse her, but he also abused my brother and myself. My sister was mm-hmm. born out of that marriage. My mom mm-hmm. went on to marry other abusers, Abuse. and so I did not know a life of stability. I, we moved constantly. We, I was raised in poverty. But despite those um, experiences, I still had a passion. Well, that, that motivated me to want more out of life, struggling, mm-hmm. you know, living in fear, um, going from place to place. That was not a good feeling. And so I wanted more out of life. I studied. Um, I, um, you know, was awarded. I was a top student. I was awarded scholarship and went on to even um, obtain athletic scholarships uh, um, to play volleyball in multiple universities. So God gave me a number of talents, and I was just determined to, to have a better life for myself. But despite that determination and despite uh, my strong will and the academic accomplishments, I had very poor self-esteem. By the time, I guess, I, I was a teenager, I was looking for affection. I, I, I was promiscuous by 18 years old. I was pregnant, got pregnant um, uh-huh. right before it was time for me to, to go and play volleyball at a major university. I had an abortion at 18. I went on to basically have very, uh, you know, just very uh, destructive relationships throughout my 20s and and up to my early 30s. I I had just been in and out of relationships with people who really didn't deserve the attention and the affection that I gave them, but I didn't it, I didn't know that I was doing anything wrong. I didn't see these people as being uh, abusers because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't associate. I knew physical abuse was wrong, but I didn't recognize that there were other ways that you could be abused. At 27, I was actually sexually assaulted by an assistant district attorney. So by the time I was in my early 30s, I was so tired of all of the, the, the things that were going on and the destruction in my life that I married a guy very, very quickly. I didn't know him but about three months, but he seemed to be a very nice person. So I jumped into the relationship. I jumped into a marriage with this person thinking that this was going to solve all of my problems and heal all of my wounds, and, and I was settling because there was a lot that this this guy, he wasn't stable financially. He had a lot of drama and a lot of baggage, but he was charming and everyone liked him. So I said, okay, I can deal with this. That turned out to be a, one of the worst decisions that I ever made. It turned my life completely upside down. I, near, I was a, a extremely emotionally abused, um, nearly lost my job, you know, due to um, how I was just being walked all over in the relationship and how much time and energy and effort I was giving to trying to maintain a marriage with someone who really was just playing games. Mm -hmm. I Mm -hmm. decided to, yeah, and so I decided to separate myself, not thinking that I was going to get a divorce, but move back to the D.C. area just to kind of save my job. And that's when I found out that the person that I married was actually a sociopath. I stopped counting it over 20 women in three weeks, and it turned out the entire marriage was a complete sham. Then, so I'm shocked. I'm glad that I found out, but at the same time, I'm heartbroken because I had been betrayed and, and you know, lost so much of myself. Then I, I met another person very shortly after the separation and got pregnant. I lost oh, a wow. child almost five months into the pregnancy, and, and right after I, you know, and during the pregnancy, that's when I realized that the person, that this new guy, that he was also abusive. I found myself having the same conversations 
and the same feelings with this particular guy as I was with the ex-husband. And on top of that, this guy was showing signs of being physically abusive. So I'm like, oh, God, how did I get myself in this situation? So when I lost that child and, and when I, you know, I was, I, okay, let me back it up. I was hospitalized. Um, this was a sudden miscarriage. This was completely unexpected. Um, there were major complications. I nearly lost my life. I was hospitalized for a couple of days, and I was completely alone. That was my wake-up call. That was my come-to-Jesus moment. I remember thinking to myself, you know, when I first got to the hospital, just grieving over the loss of a child and to saying to myself, Lord, let me just make it out of here alive. And I did not know how my life had gotten to that place. How did I go from being a responsible woman, educated, you know, professional, good job, to fighting for my life in the hospital for some foolish choices that I made, you know? And why was there nobody there? I didn't even have anyone to pick me up from the, the hospital. I, I had to take a taxi cab home from the hospital. And uh, the next day I was at work trying to make numbers. So there was something really, really wrong with my choices, my, my choices. But I had to go to God. I, I, I literally, um, you know, I didn't know how I was going to make it. I literally had no one, no one to talk to, no support system. And I knew I couldn't go back to the guy who, was, who you know, I, I had the, ba the, you know, the child with because I knew he wasn't right. So, you know, here I was. I was at the complete mercy. I, I was at the complete mercy of God. I really had no other option but to really go to God for real and to and to and to beg Him. You know, Lord, please help me. You know, so that's where um, th this passion, you know, uh, kind of started because I want. I know that my experience is, is, you know, unique to me, but there are many, many other people who are just their lives are being wasted, you know, they're, they're just they're wasting away and they're making a lot of poor choices. They're um, experiencing a lot of pain um, because they have entered into destructive relationships and they have a pattern of destructive relationships and they don't even know um, how much damage this is really doing to their life. Wow, your story is powerful. I just want to thank you for being vulnerable and just sharing it and being able to um, help somebody else, right? You just never know who's experiencing some of the things that you've been through, and just being able to be vulnerable and share your story is amazing. So I just want to commend you for doing that. And for well, reaching back and pulling forward. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. what what you. And for saying? reaching back and pulling forward to help other people to prevent them from going through some of the same things. Yes, because let me tell you something. I did not. <laughs> I'm. I. You know. And thank you. I feel like it is my. It is my duty to share my story. It's my yeah. duty. That's that's my. That is my commission. That's a mandate that God gave me. You know, I don't have a choice. You know, I know that everybody, um, I have to use, you know, discernment, but my story is what brought me to Christ. I would not have come to Christ like that, you know, except those experiences happened. I would not know how much I was loved. I would not know that I had an identity in Christ. I had been a church-going person, and I knew about going to church, uh, and I was, quote, unquote, saved, but I was not really living a Christian lifestyle, and I did not see that growing up. I didn't even think it was even possible for me to live a Christian lifestyle because I thought that that was reserved for certain people. And I thought, I didn't even think God knew my, I didn't even think he even cared who I was. I didn't, I just didn't, I just, it, had, it did not even dawn on me that God 
wanted me. So Mm -hmm. with this new relationship with God and with this new understanding, now I realize that none of those experiences happen by happenstance that it was by design that I went through the things that I went through, that I came from the family that I came from. Although it is not feel good a lot of the time, but there is a purpose behind it and that there are people that absolutely need to hear it so that they can be free. And and, and they do. And I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to, you know, because it, 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 with going through all of that, I'm sure it took definitely some time with God, right, a deeper relationship with him to be able to even do it. So I, oh. I, just, I, I just commend you. I just I, I commend you. So congratulations on your new book, Break Free from the Cycle of Destructive Relationships. So let's talk about your book. I know you talked a little bit about it, your passion. Let's talk about your book because you're touching a lot of things in your book. I know we're not going to give too much away, though, because we want the, the listeners to go purchase your book. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, okay, so the book is titled Break Free from the Cycle of Destructive Relationships. I think I put the wrong title in my in my, my blurb, and I apologize for that. But okay. it's Break Free from the, the Cycle of Destructive Relationships. And um, I'm encouraging people to do that by embracing their identity in Christ. And I'm encouraging people to also pursue their purpose. So ultimately... This is not what 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 this what this book is designed to do is to um, lead you towards a healthier version of yourself, so that you understand that your identity is not in a relationship, it's not in a marriage, it's not in who you are, it's not in your connections to other people. You actually have an identity in Christ, and you know you have a purpose in life. That, that God gave you, and it is important for you to fulfill that. But, you know, when we, uh, when we are, you know, have these mm-hmm. different kind of destructive relationships, that kind of pulls us away from that, and that actually is, a, is, is, out, is not the will of God. It's not the will of God for us to be worshiping and idolizing and in these destructive relationships and marriages with people who really, who really were not for us. So... One one big thing that this book does is it defines what a healthy relationship is. Because so many of us come from backgrounds where, you know, we witnessed a lot of unhealthy things, a, a lot of um, abuse. Um, our parents may have been single or married multiple times or whatever. Some of us really didn't have good examples growing up. So I think that um, we need to define what a healthy relationship is so that we know when we're not in a healthy relationship. And so a healthy relationship is where two partners are, um, have equal, equal rights. Um, they, the, the partners respect each other equally. The, the, the relationship is not lopsided, but one person has more power than the other. In a healthy relationship, you're not intimidated. You're you're free to be who you are, um, without fear of backlash or or being criticized or being yelled at or being hit. Um, you know, healthy relationship. And 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 I'm gonna be more specific. We're talking about godly relationships. And I and and the way that I I guess I kind of really. Um, it, describe that is I talk about God's love. I talk about um, how God has, um, you know, how He's a merciful God. How His God, how His love does not change. How He does not change from from one minute to the next. So God is not a God that one minute He loves you and then the the next minute He doesn't. God is, you know, He um, He protects His sheep. He feeds His sheep. His sheep. I talk about the, the, the fruit of the spirit, how a, a godly person, you know, has, uh, is operating in the, in the fruit of the spirit. And so this person is, 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 is kind. This person is loving. This person is, is, um, um, has self-control. This person is patient. 
you know, this person, this person mm-hmm. is, you know, has goodness. This person is meek. So a person who is not uh, walking in the, the fruit of the spirit, a person who is prideful, a person who is arrogant, a person who is physically violent, these are things that we need to pay close attention to because... So one main thing that this book does is I have to, you know, we carefully examine God's love and kind of break that down about how Christ, about how Christ loved us so much that He sacrificed His life for us, and that there's no greater love, you know, than that. So, so, you know, that's one part. Then, once we know what you know, healthy relationships look like, I also talk about and I define destructive relationships, and I go into the different types of abuse because for some of us, we're, we don't know that abuse can, can also be emotional, it can be verbal, it can be financial. Abuse is not somebody punching you uh, or, or, or shoving you or something. It's not always like that. So there are different types of abuse, and they're all destructive. So just because someone is um, just making you feel bad or someone is is a serial cheater or uh, someone is a liar, these are all things that we need to pay attention to, and those relationships are destructive. I introduce um, people who, you know, people who have antisocial personality disorders. What the signs, you know, what are the signs to to look for? We talk about red flags in relationships. And and then once we define what destructive relationships are, um, then, you know, the next question is, do you have a pattern of destructive relationships? I recognize I had to kind of take a step back after all of that that, I, mm-hmm. that happened to me in my life, and I recognized that I, I had a pattern of dating the same type of person over and over and over again. So once you recognize that you have a pattern, now we can get into the nitty-gritty. That means that destructive relationships have become a stronghold in your life. So I get into, you know, how do we, you know, overcome strongholds? What is a stronghold? Um, You know, because that thing is serious, and it will take you out. Um, Then after that, you know, we, you know, I talk about the importance of obedience um, because it takes the power of Christ in order to break that stronghold. It took the power of Christ for me to do that. I had to be completely submitted. I had to um, abstain from se- sexual immorality. I had to follow his law. I had to, I had to start reading his word and finding out what his word says about how I should, should um, live this life and what's pleasing to God and what's not pleasing God and why he has the laws that he has, and that they're for our protection. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that, that really is a big point because when we don't walk in, a, in obedience, you know, we don't really have the wisdom and the discernment of the Holy Spirit, and we fall into all kind of traps, you know, all kind of traps that the enemy sets to get us, you know, off our course and to kill us. Because that's the ultimate plan of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and destroy. So the enemy can lure us into all these different kind of things that we're not even aware of because we're not being sober. We're not being diligent. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, it is the, the voice of the Holy Spirit that, that helps you to decipher the difference between a loving relationship or a relationship that's built on lust. Okay? So... You know, talk about sexual immorality. I talk about setting boundaries. Um, um, you know, what are boundaries? How do you set boundaries? Uh, you know, what's what's a healthy boundary? What's an unhealthy boundary? I talk about the healthy and a, 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 he, the, a healthy approach to to dating or a biblical approach to dating, I should say. And um, you know, pursuing your purpose. How you know, once your focus. Um, um, is no longer on who are you dating, who you're dating, or who you're in a relationship with, and now your focus mm-hmm. is on what are my gifts and talents, and how can I use this to advance the kingdom? You know, who am I outside of 
all of this stuff and the things that I have, the people who have been pulling from me my entire life. Who am I? Because for a long time, I didn't know who I was. I'm just now discovering who I really am, you know. And then going from there, you know, spending time alone. The importance of not jumping into another relationship after you have ended another ended a relationship, especially if it was a destructive one, you know, because we have to take time to heal, to get with God, to figure out where we went wrong, you know, so that we don't go and repeat the same things over and over and over again. And and then you know after we you know embracing our identity in Christ, so that really is. Um, you know, some of the main things that, you know, the book kind of covers. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Because you really went deep in there, and I'm sure every listener can, you know, get something from it, right, which is why I want to go a little bit deeper. So, Yolanda, what are some strategies you would give to listeners to overcome unhealthy relationships? Well, the first thing I would do is I would tell people to stop. I would I would tell people to, to you know, Take a time out, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Don't don't go on no dates. Don't talk on the phone. Like don't do nothing. I would tell that person to stop any and all uh, unmarital sexual activity. I don't even know if unmarital is the word, but you know, all <laughs> sexual <Yeah>. activity. <laughs> you know, I would tell people to I would tell people to stop all of that. Because, you know, this is something that God has, you you can't, this is not something that you can feel your way through. Um, because something is wrong with our thought, our thought pattern. There's something wrong. Yes, nobody discur- deserves to be abused, but we have a role that we play in it. And it's up to us to figure out what's going on. And to go to God about, you know, we have a God that loves us, that wants to share this information. He wants us to be free. So the first thing I would say, stop everything, you know, and pray to God. Ask God for help. Say, Lord, you know what? I have gotten myself into a situation, and I don't know what to do. And I need your help getting out. I can't do this on my own. Help me, please. And really be, be sincere about it. Mm-hmm. And then after that, spend time meditating on his word. When I first started meditating on I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Um, I was reading, like, Christian articles and things like that because, quite frankly, I wasn't reading the Bible like, like I should. I didn't even – the reading the Bible just wasn't something that I was doing regularly, which is a lot of the reason why I did not have um, – you know, a, a, you know, the knowledge that I could have had. So it is important that we read our word, you know, and then we get to see by reading the word, by, by developing a stronger relationship with Christ, by worshiping him, um, we begin to see just how much God loves us. And it is his love that, that, you know, makes you look at things a lot different. You say, wait a minute. This, you know, I've been over here um, giving myself, you know, prioritizing these relationships over God. I've been, these people have been taught, I've been tossed to and fro. I've been through hell and back. I have, you know, all kind of stuff has happened. But God has been there, and he's protected me even up to this point. And it just, that right there alone would just make you say, wow, God, thank you. And so from there, that's that appreciation of his um, unconditional love, his grace, um, thinking about what could have happened and what should have happened but didn't happen, that, that right there makes you say, well, I'm going to do, do things your way, God. I want to love you the way, you know, I know that I can never love, I, I can never have, yeah, I'm not, I'm not perfect. But I want to do everything that I can do to please God. And that right there, right. that's where the transformation. Hmm? I love that. And those are some amazing strategies to use to 
um, overcome uh, his relationships. Because I think sometimes when people are in them, if they're used to it, they don't really know there's the signs, right? And which is what I yeah. want to talk about more, the signs of unhealthy relationships, right? So what are some of the signs that people should be on the lookout for to know if the relationship is healthy or unhealthy? Okay. Well, um, and a lot of this I took from um, the National Network to End Domestic uh, Violence. Um, mm-hmm. the, part that, the, the, the signs that you want to look for is um, the person has abused other people in their past. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, a person who is has a tendency to be violent with others, a person mm-hmm. who wants to rush into when you rush into a, a relationship, that's that is a major indicator that something is wrong with that relationship. You should mm-hmm. not go from I met this person and we went out, you know, for lunch to we're in a, you know, this person is talking about marriage and kids in a week, and that happens, mm-hmm. you know person you just met, there's not, you know, two days later they're showering you with flowers and gifts and and, and candy and whatever. Um, uh-huh. Attention. Yeah. Um, a person is possessive and controlling. Pos- being possessive and controlling, those are not healthy characteristics. Um, a person is jealous, extremely jealous. A certain, a little bit of jealous, jealousy I, I think is normal. But when a person is trying to get you to, to rearrange their li- your, your life around their jealous tendencies, there's something wrong with that relationship. A person that doesn't respect your boundaries, they don't respect your space, you know, they treat your things as if, you know, they own them. They, they treat your body as if they own your body. That person, you know, you, you, you may say something, you may say no to something and that person doesn't, doesn't, doesn't care. Um, a person that makes you feel unworthy, a person that criticizes you and calls you names or talks down to you or is condescending, that is not love. And nobody should tolerate that. You know, a person who curses you out, yelling and screaming, that is somebody that is trying to intimidate you and trying to manipulate you into getting who, into submitting to, to them. So, Anybody that's trying to manipulate you, who's yelling and screaming, who's calling, you know, who's, who's um, got you walking on eggshells, these mm-hmm. are signs that you need, to, you, need to, you need to take a closer look at that relationship because not only is it not healthy, it's only going to get worse. Mm-hmm. A person who mm-hmm. is a victim all the time, a mm-hmm. person who you're in a relationship with someone, and they're always a victim. Something always happening to them. They got their dog died. Their mama left them. I mean, everything is somebody has done something to them. But on the other hand, they don't take responsibility for the things that happen to them, the choices mm-hmm. that they made. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a person that has a lot of drama from their past relationships, you know, there's something wrong with that picture when a person has a quote-unquote crazy ex-girlfriend and they're calling their ex-girlfriend crazy. There's something mm-hmm. wrong with, with you know, that person's choices. Yeah. And now yeah. you're going to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. That is so true. And, you know, sometimes it's a pattern, right? You know, people... um fall into those patterns, but like you said it before, they have this past, what what they saw when they grew up and things like that. So it's all about that mindset and seeking help if you need it, going to a counselor, getting help. And I think people mm-hmm. are scared of getting help, right? They're scared of going to therapy. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, listen, I got a great therapist. I started going to therapy when I got out of that thing, When I after I was hospitalized and all that. I, I thought whatever kind of therapy... <laughs> I was, matter of fact, um, that was one of the first things I did was I looked for a Christian counselor, and I and I, I'm telling you that lady was amazing. It was worth every cent. That lady got me. I mean, because I, I was in ICU, I was on life support, so um, that was extremely vital. That was an extremely vital step. Um, so yes, um, I go to therapy regularly. I even had to go through anger management 
um, uh, right, you know, right after all of that happened because I was very angry at the whole world. Um, and um, to this day, I still I see I have a, a good therapist where I am right now, and I and I go every two weeks, and I need it like it's 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 and I recommend that everybody go to therapy to be quite frank with you, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yes, yes, I think that professional counseling. Um, I have a te- a whole team of mental health professionals, and um, that is key in my um, in my personal growth. So for our listeners that are listening, therapy is not bad. Even healthy people go to therapy. So get the help that you need. Go to a professional that can help you and stop going to your cousin next door. Get help (laughs) if you need help. (laughs) Yes, and make sure and honestly make sure that that, because I had a a kind of a bad experience with a a, a counselor who really wasn't, um, you know, wasn't, didn't have, wasn't a believer, wasn't a Christian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important that you have to, you do have to to examine your, your therapist. Um, I think it is important to have a Christian therapist who understands, you know, Christian values, but, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. That's so important. And in your book, you discuss how having a deeper relationship with God helped you overcome this abusive relationship, right? Relationship. So, you know, having that deeper relationship with him, right? So can we talk a little bit yeah. more about that? Well, um, you know, so what happened was after I got tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired, um, you know, I was completely sold out to God at that point, you know. Um, I, the, after I, the, after the initial, um, uh, I guess transformation. You know, when that journey started for me, I was on cloud nine, and I'll be honest with you, I was I was in such a healthy place emotionally and physically and all of that that I felt like I I really um, couldn't relate to other. You know, I, I really I, I stood out from other people, and I felt very alone, and I that that part was kind of, um, it was kind of difficult for me to be standing out the way that I did. And I kind of felt guilty to be quite frank with you. And so I kind of, I kind of started to lower my standards again. After a few, after about eight months, I started dating again and I, and I fell, I I say fell. I, um, was sexually active with someone, um, after that initial transformation, thinking that, you know, thinking that I had gotten too high. I thought that I had gotten too high and mighty or something like that. And and, and then I got depressed. So it it didn't last. I mean, because once the Holy Spirit once the once the Holy Spirit changes you, I don't think that you can really ever go back to the lifestyle that you had before and not and be okay with that. Um so uh there was a few months there after that transformation where I was still trying, struggling with some things, but, you know, after my, you know, there, then I met another uh, foolish person, and after that situation, I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> so I mm-hmm, throw my mm-hmm. hands up. I, I was like, you know what, clearly there is no way but but God. So it, I, I, I'm saying I had to get to a place where I there was no shadow of a doubt that I had to do things God's way, and I was so tired of being so feeling so low and being depressed and being having all these random people, you know, um, in my life and feeling so and looking over my shoulder and all that. That was a those were horrible feelings. And when I really, really um, submitted that thing. I found I started having a whole lot a whole lot more peace, and mm-hmm. while I didn't have a lot of dates, I, I mean the date my dating life once you once you um um you know go celibate my dating life came to a complete halt, and you know 
it's been ye- honestly, it's been years since I've been in a relationship, and I can't even tell. I, I in in the years that I haven't been in a relationship in the past five years, I can't even tell you how many dates I I I I, I, I don't remember anything. Any there's there's not one person that really stands out that I say I met and I was you know interested in. But during this period of time that I have submitted myself, I have, um, I'm, I'm active in ministry. So I found out, you know, who I, I, I found out that I was a minister. I found out that I had a message. I authored a book. Um, I have joined the choir at the church that I belong to. And I am ministering to other people. People are being blessed by, you know, what I have to say. And I know that I would not be, I I would not, I would not even have the confidence to do those things except that God had to really, really change me. And I had to get over my fear of people because I was living in a shit, my deep down inside, what was keeping me in these poor, um, in, in, in these kind of this, this destructive cycle was because I was trying to minimize myself and blend in and conform to what other people thought I should be. I never wanted to rock the boat. And so what, what, what I was forced to do was I was forced to doing things that would rock the boat. I was forced to getting outside of my comfort zone and trying things that I never would consider, doing things like taking voice lessons, you know, things that made me, um, yeah, that, that, that didn't seem to be leading to my, I guess, that didn't seem to be major things, but really it was for me because I had to learn I had to develop a better relationship with myself, and I had to um, stop being so concerned and so influenced by by people, and I had to be more influenced by God and who God said I was. So that that mm-hmm. that is not easy. That takes a lot of courage. Mhm. Mhm. Thank you for sharing that because that, that was just so, so, so powerful of how, you know, having that relationship with him helped you through that. So you are the CEO and founder of Break Free Ministry, Inc. So please tell us more about your company and how we can support your company. Okay. Well, um, so after I published the book, I was, um, in, in, you know, inspired to go ahead and and, 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 uh, and found the ministry. So the ministry, Break Free Ministries, is to uh, empower others to break the cycle of relationship, uh, break the cycle of destructive relationships through knowledge of their identity in Christ to have more purposeful and peaceful lives. So um, the the ministry is based on the principles of the book, and so you know the book is kind of the entry, you know, I guess kind of the the entry information and then the, 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 the ministry actually teaches in depth the principles of the book and how to and how to live and how to live a holy and righteous lifestyle and how that that alone um, breaks the cycle of destructive relationships. So um, so this is you know this is about empowering others, this is about building uh, other people up in Christ so that, you know, they can become productive members, you know, of the kingdom, you know, so that they can also, um, you know, win souls and glorify God, which is what God wants us to do. So, um, yeah, so um, the website is um, breaktheyoke.org, and um, I can be reached um, on, on the website. Um, I, my email address is Yolanda at breaktheyoke.org. So please follow and support her amazing 
company or, you know, if you want to get involved or support, go check her website out. Yolanda is definitely somebody to connect with, somebody to know, somebody to speak at your next event because she has an amazing story. So, Yolanda, you're also the founder of, CEO and founder of YRC Expire Enterprises, LLC. So talk to us more about what's, you know, what's all under your enterprise. Yes. So, you know, the funny thing happened is, you know, God is amazing. So when I published the book, I initially thought that I was just going to found a ministry. Mm -hmm. But then when I did that, I realized um, through a consultant that I can't actually, if I sell my book through my ministry, then, um, you know, that's really not ideal for tax purposes. Um, and I didn't want to limit the book to the nonprofit organization. So I, I started, um, I founded YRC Aspire Enterprises, which is my LLC, and, and that actually is the, the parent um, corporation, or actually um, it's an LLC. So that's my parent company that actually encompasses Break Free Ministry, but the YRC basically is designed to empower others to maximize their gifts and their talents, to break um, social norms, to become the you know the person that God intended them to be. So, in this in the LLC, not only you know we're not focusing simply on relationships, but we're we we want to get other people to become the best version of themselves. We want we want to get people uh, past their circumstances past the box that they have put themselves in, that other people put themselves in, you know, that other people put them in. I know for me, you know, this was a real struggle coming from the, the background that I came from and poverty and all of that. So we have to get people to, I guess, be more creative and to get outside of that box and to be open and, and, to, and to take those chances um, to find out what their gifts are, to recognize and to realize that these gifts and these talents are important, they're significant, and that that's how they're going to um, fulfill their destiny and achieve greatness and, you know, become, you know, um, um, you know productive members of society. So that's, that's the purpose of why RC is fire enterprises. And, and, and yeah. Amazing. So this is definitely connect with her. Like I said, Yolanda's doing some great things, and which leads me into one of my favorite parts of the interview is that, you know, my guests, everybody I bring onto my table, they are consistently building your own tables, right? You're consistently building your tables every day. So how did you create your seat at the table? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, um, <laughs> So a lot of the experiences that I went through, um, I experienced a lot of rejection. I experienced, um, I didn't, I didn't, a lot of the things that I was able to accomplish, they weren't the traditional way. So there was no red carpet for me playing, um, you know, when I got my scholarships. And there was no red carpet for me in ministry. Nobody, nobody, you know, reached out to me and said, Jolanda, I think you too would just make an awesome minister. Nobody, you know, there were a few people that said, oh, you have a story, but nobody, there was nobody in my corner when I was writing the book. So for some of us, you know, I think it is important that we, we reach out to others. Um, we, you know, talking about having a seat at the table, we, we do need to have relationships with other people. But for some of us, and I guess and I should say in addition to that, some of us will have to be creative. Some of us will have to be the initiator. And we may not be invited to the table, but we may have to initiate some things on our own. We may, be, mm -hmm. we may have to be creative with the resources that God gave us. We may have to be okay with, you know, starting alone at first and being criticized and being put down and experiencing some discomfort and then once you actually um, start to achieve certain levels of success, now people will embrace you and they'll want, they'll want to know, you know, they'll want to be connected. You, you're able to reach out to other people because you're not in obscurity anymore. 
So I love that. Yes. You know, you know, inviting yourself to the room, right? Don't wait for nobody else to invite you. Invite yourself mm-hmm. to the room and create your own seat, right? Yeah. You know, and I think that's what people have to remember. You know, nobody's going to give you anything. Build your own table and invite yourself to the room. Mm-hmm. Because, yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you couldn't have said it better. <laughs> <laughs> so on our journey, you talked about your journey throughout the night. A lot of people don't like the process, but the process is what gets us to the next level. So what did failure teach you on your journey? I'm sorry, what did what teach me? What did failure teach you on your journey? Woo! Well, um, well, failure is what, I guess those were just learn. those were definite learning experiences because if I had not failed, for instance, in these relationships and stuff, I would have just gone through life settling. I, I probably, who knows, I, I could be dead, you know. So failure taught me that there was something bigger and better out there. Failure taught me that there was a better way. You know, failure is what, you know, what gave me the uh, strength that I needed to, to say, you know what, um, I am not that person. And there's more to me. Let me figure out what 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 is, what else is, you know, what else do I have to offer? What else do I have to offer, um, you know, the society? You know, who, who, who am I? And so when I, you know, failure kind of led me, you know, to, to, to try to figure out who I really was and, and helped me to make much wiser and much better choices. So um, I don't think that I would have been able to, uh, First of all, I wouldn't have been able to write a book. I wouldn't have anything to write about. Um, but I don't think that I would would be able to even, you know, mentor other people or help other people, except that I had failed and I had witnessed failure. And as a matter of fact, you know, I really can't relate to people who have not made mistakes in their life. I, I, I don't understand that because, you know, what I struggled with when I was young, you know, just a few years ago, was thinking that because I did fail, because I, because I didn't come from a perfect background and didn't have a perfect lifestyle, that I was somehow inferior to other people. So I think failure is, 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 is extremely, um, you know, um, significant and helpful. I love that because it's part of the process, right? We have to learn to embrace that, and it's it's a lesson. It's a lesson, yeah. and I always say when to learn, right? When to learn. So what mm-hmm. did success teach you on your journey? Because you're very successful. What did um, what teach me? What did success teach you? Oh, success. Well, success taught me that um, that I'm capable, you know, Mm-hmm. That even though I had experienced some setbacks, that they didn't define me. I had been, you know, for instance, you know, even right now, um, I experience trials. I experience, you know, situate conflict, and it's hard. But but I can draw back on my previous successes, and God helps me do that. He reminds me, you know, I was with you here. I was with you here, and I have a long line of successes that I can pull back from where I didn't think I was going to make it, you know, I I had, you know, I I was challenged in a particular area and I was struggling to get through that thing. And then lo and behold, God, you know, just bust the door wide open or he just, things turned around in my favor. And I can honestly say that, 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 that things turn around in my favor. So success has um, increased my faith. Um, that's what success has done. Yes, yes, and, and and that's so important, right, having that faith and just staying humble. Mm-hmm. So what can we expect from you the rest of 2019? We're in the fourth quarter, Yolanda, and I know you're <laughs> going to finish it strong. So what can we expect from you? Well, you know, honestly, I think that, um, you know, just – Making myself, making this book uh, more visible um, to others, marketing, um, putting my, putting, you know, the ministry out there and making myself more visible to other people because 
there are a lot of people out there who are suffering, um, people who are um, really not living their, their best life, and they, they don't know where to go. There are people who are committing suicide. Uh, we are really in a time and day, in, in, a, in a, you know, a time and a day and an age where people really are giving up hope. So I'm just going to continue with this assignment that God has given me and really put it out there for, so that um, other people can, um, you know, experience um, and witness some of the, some of the triumphs that I've been able to obtain, but also um, be empowered and get the knowledge that they need so that they can become the best version of themselves so that they can also experience the love, the love of Christ. So that's really, um, you know, my main thing is taking this thing to another level and, and not being, and not being afraid of the pushback and the resistance. So that's it. I love it. And I can't wait to see the great things that you're going to birth, you know, in the fourth quarter and in 2020. So congratulations in advance. And I'm sure this platform is going to continue to grow even bigger, right? Because I love, you know, that you're vulnerable, you're sharing your story, and I'm sure it's going to help many people throughout the world, right? Because a lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, uh, abuse and, you know, different things that have happened. But it has to be talked about, right, in order to be able to help someone else, right? Our stories are so important. So thank you again, Yolanda, for creating the platforms and and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Ashley. And thank you. I'm really humbled, you know, to even, you know, to, to, be, uh, to be considered. And, and I just thank you just, just for the interview. And um, you're awesome. <laughs> I'm excited. You to are what too. I'm going to do for you. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. And would you please tell my listeners how they can follow you, support you, and connect with you on all social media platforms? Okay. Well, um, you can connect with me on Facebook. Um, my Facebook handle is um, my Facebook handle is um, well, you know, my name is Yolanda Compass. That's Y O L A uh, Y O L A N D A um, C U M B E S S. Um, I have two pages. One page is yrcaspire.com. The other page is, I'm sorry, um, I'm giving you my website. But if you go to, um, you know, Yolanda Cumbus, I'm the only Yolanda Cumbus. Um, that's, that's, that's my social media page. Um, I have a page for uh, Break, uh, Break Free Ministries, another page for uh, YRC Aspire Enterprises, I have um, a website for Break Free Ministries is BreakTheYoke.org. The other website for YRC Aspire um, um, Enterprises is YRCAspire.com. So please follow, support, and connect with her on all social media platforms. Yolanda is amazing, so definitely for our listeners, definitely connect her and book her to speak. That's your next event because she has an amazing story. So, Yolanda, thank you so much for coming and taking the time out of your very, very busy schedule to come to the table. This has been a powerful interview, and I can't wait to invite you back. Oh, thank you so much. You have Thank you very much. <laughs> you are welcome, and I look forward to working with you and connecting with you in the future. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So I would like to give a special thanks to Tammy Collins Marquis and John Schamberger. I would also like to give a special thanks to Kimberly McLemore and my intern Sarah from Tennessee State University and my intern Vontaria from Winston-Salem State University. You all may follow me on Facebook at Ashley Little and on Instagram at underscore Ashley A. Little. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Creating Your Seat at the Table, where Ashley speaks with corporate professionals, celebrities, entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers who are transitioning or have transitioned to entrepreneurship. 